Well, with me now is Lauren Fabianski, who's communications director at Pregnant Then Screwed, a charity group that campaigns for the rights of pregnant women and new mothers. Iqbal Bahia, who owns his own engineering company here in Leeds, and Adam Hawksby from Onward, the centre-right think tank producing research on economic and social issues. Previously, he was head of policy for Conservative Mayor of West Midlands, Andy Street. Welcome to you all. Lauren, let me start with you, because we've had this big free childcare offer, mm. but it's not available for every working parent until September 2025. Mm. Are you pleased or is it just too little too late? I mean, there's 1.7 million women who want to work more hours, but they can't because of the cost of childcare. They're not going to be able to work those hours until 2025. A lot of these benefits are not going to come in until children who haven't even been born yet age into this entitlement. It is overwhelmingly positive that the government finally seemed to have made this connection between accessible childcare and women's economic empowerment though yeah. and that's something that we've been campaigning for for years so this is huge for women it's not so great for providers right well i'm sure we'll come back to that in a second but Iqbal Bahia um, i mean you heard what Lauren said there uh, but as a small business owner would you rather that money have been put into uh, cutting corporation tax than childcare uh, I mean, just a question, I'm not the owner, I'm the managing director, but yeah, sure, I mean, we're sort of disappointed that corporation tax wasn't cut. I mean, it's going from 19 to 25% for taxable profits over 250k, and the government had said that it'll only apply to 10% of the businesses, but there is a concern that this could dampen growth for the sector. Mm. So, Adam Hawksby, I wonder if you can sort of, like, <laughs> arbitrate between these two, because you, your think tank called on the government to fix the broken childcare system. Was that done today or not really? So the, the reason that we've done research on childcare is because it's a huge barrier to economic growth. As Lauren said, lots of people being unable to access the labour market. So it's a good place for the government to put their money. And the right priority today. It, it is a, the, the right priority, yeah. And reducing cost is really important. Costs have risen by about 20% in the past five years. Costs of parenting are about triple what they are across the rest of the OECD. Right. Well, let me just come to a specific point to you, Iqbal Bahir, um, because there was this £9 billion tax relief for companies investing. Um, will you take advantage of that? Will that help your business? Yes, it's pleasing, not just for our business, but I think for all manufacturing companies, that the government has really promoted investment in new machinery, plant and equipment, because to get productivity in manufacturing, to get efficiency, we have to invest. And it's great to see that we can make taxable savings on our profits by investing in the latest plant and equipment. So you will use that? Absolutely. You will take that up? Yeah, right, OK. I mean, back to you, Adam, on this point of investment, because, you know, there was this offer, despite the you know disappointment for Iqbal on a corporation tax, there was this offer um, on the tax relief, but also new investment zones, mm -hmm. 12 Canary Wharfs, including right here in West Yorkshire. I mean, does that do what you want on... There's a lot of uh, levelling up pledges too. I mean, I'm only just skimming the surface, but it, was it big enough? Was it bold enough? So one of the big challenges around economic growth in the UK is not just our headline tax rates, but it is the fact that our city is massively underperforming their comparative. We have towns that aren't plugged into economic growth. So the investment zones that are announced today will, I think, be a big part of boosting productivity in those areas around particular clusters, things like advanced manufacturing and the creative industries. And the devolution deals that are announced as well for Andy Burnham and Andy Street are ways to get us out of this rut where all of the growth is happening in London and not elsewhere. I think we might have a problem with your mic, so apologies if, if it's not sounding tip-top. We'll try and fix it in a second. Uh, but let me come to you, Lauren, on, on the politics of all this, just standing back a minute, because childcare was Labour's big idea, wasn't it? Mm. Have the Tories shot Labour's fox on this, do you think? I don't think so. If you look at when this is actually going to roll out, we're going to have another general election before many people benefit from any of these announcements today. And we know that Labour have been working on something, as, as have the Lib Democrats, as have the other political parties, to compete with that, to win the votes of parents. Mm. I mean, do you think there needed to be there needed to be sort of far more... I mean, given the financial constraints, it was pretty difficult, wasn't it, to, to offer any more than they did today? Yes, and I think... A reason that this can't happen sooner, why parents can't take this up sooner, is because the sector is in crisis, because we've been losing providers at a rate of knots. We've lost thousands from the Ofsted register. And we know that over 50% ran at a loss last year. Mm. Um, so there's a huge recruitment and retention crisis. We can't just switch this on tomorrow and tell everybody that you can just take up these three hours. The provision's not there. Mm. 
Adam, I'm hoping your mic has, has magically fixed itself, so let's give it another go. Um, because we had a poll uh, yesterday on, on exclusively on Channel 4 News which showed that the Conservatives would be wiped out in all 45 so-called red wall seats. Do you think this budget will do anything to change that or is it just not extravagant enough, really? So there are two things that the government really need to do to win back those seats. One of them is just restoring their reputation for probity, for being ethical, and to restore after the Knoxford Party Gate and the Trust Government the idea that they are competent and stable. And then the other is tackling the biggest priority of the public, which is the cost of living crisis. And so some of the stuff today on the energy price guarantee uh, and other measures will hopefully show people that they're making progress on that and turn around some of those quite troubling holding numbers. What do you make of that, Iqbal? Oh, I think the key thing is, for me, investment in manufacturing has to be there. UK manufacturing has suffered from Brexit. Then Brexit was taken off the table because of the pandemic. That We're just recovering from the pandemic and we've gone straight into the Ukrainian crisis, which has caused a global supply chain crisis. Now we've got the energy crisis where manufacturing companies are really, really struggling. We've seen it ourselves as a small manufacturing business that manufactured predominantly for the medical sector. When the country went into lockdown, our order book fell by 60% and because all elective surgery was cancelled. Mm. Everything we manufacture was predominantly for electric sur elective surgery, for orthopaedics. We went through a very tough and challenging time. We've made parts for the UK's uh, government's cause for um, the ventilators. And we managed to struggle through and come through the other end. We had to make our biggest ever investment when the country went into shutdown. So what did, you, what did you want the government to do today that they didn't do? I think fundamentally I was very disappointed that was not enough done for apprenticeships. I know they talked about the returnership for the over 50s and bringing this skill set back. However, where are they going to pass this skill set to? Mm. We need the next generation of engineers coming through, the, through this industry. So skill shortages are a massive issue for Huge, you? Yeah. I mean, the biggest three factors facing UK manufacturing at the moment is recruitment, skill shortages, the global supply chain, and what's not on the table will be net zero. Mm -hmm. So yes, you know, these three challenges have to be addressed, I think. So what we saw today, Adam, didn't threaten to unleash the growth that Liz Truss talked about all the time, growth, growth, growth. I mean, there wasn't enough here for that. No, I think it did actually have a real focus on growth. I think that there's going to need to be more. And I think the, the really interesting thing that Iqbal raises around apprenticeships is that delivery is the real challenge this government has. They've announced a lot of fantastic schemes around technical education, T-levels, apprenticeships, the lifetime learning guarantee. But they've actually got to get bumps on seats. They've got to get people taking these courses. And so all the great stuff that was announced today is going to cause a big delivery challenge. Um, just, again, getting you to stand back and look at the kind of economic picture uh, Lauren, the steepest fall in household disposable income since records began. But there was some optimism there, wasn't there? Um, I mean, how do you feel about your own prospects, other people's prospects now? I think in the short term, this doesn't really help or excite parents who are paying £14,000 a year for a full-time childcare place. We know that we, we hear from parents every single day who are choosing between putting food on the table and paying mm. for the childcare that they need in order to work. So... Um, I don't think this is going to help in the short term. I would be interested to see how this plays out if the government actually make the cost that they're, the amount of money that they're investing meet the cost of delivering provision, which is not something that we're very confident in at the moment. Iqbal, in a word, do you feel more optimistic about the future economically? Yes, I think I do feel more optimistic. I mean, we're looking for stability and reassurance, and I think that's what this budget in small ways has provided the manufacturing sector. Lauren Fabianski, Iqbal Bahia and Adam Hawksby, thank you all very much. And apologies, uh, there were a few issues with the sound quality there. I hope you managed to catch the gist of that debate.